Hey, welcome to the Hot Slice Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Denise Greer, Executive Editor here at Pizza Today. And with me is Creative Director, Josh Cowan. Hey, Josh. Hello, Denise. It is nice to be back on the podcast. I think I know, it's we probably haven't been <laughs> like a month and a half, maybe two months. Uh, I'm so sorry. That, you know, that's, that's a, hey, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on. I've been pulled in different directions yeah. in companies. So, uh, but I'm very, very happy to be on today. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Josh plays a huge hand in what's happening on the design side for like Pizza Expo, which is, uh, what are, where are we at? A hundred, how many days away are we from uh, Pizza we're Expo? About, I think we're 10 weeks away. I'm, 10 I don't, weeks I'm away, not, yeah, 10 I'm weeks. not counting the days yet. So. <laughs> well, we're getting close. <laughs> Speaking of Pizza Expo, uh, so registration is open. You can go to pizzaexpo.com and uh, register for the show. And it's sh- it, we have it all outlined as far as the educational programs, the competitions, the keynotes, the everything is there. And it is, Josh, it's jam-packed, isn't it? It really is jam-packed. You know, uh, of course, in 21, you know, we had people, you know, didn't feel comfortable coming or whatnot. And yeah. and so so our, our schedule was a little down, but this year it is stacked up. And we got some new speakers too this yeah. year, which I'm really excited for. I am too. And I'm really stoked for some of the demos that are happening and, Mm -hmm. uh, and the keynotes, the keynotes are going to be amazing. We have three keynotes this year rather than two. So we have one on uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. So, so you'll get your keynote fill if you'd like. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to make you get up more early every day. I'm just saying. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Not sorry. But, uh, so there's one little key component of, uh, pizza expo that our guests, is our guests are very familiar with and that is the world pizza games and yeah. the dough acrobatics uh which is always man it is always a fan favorite everyone loves uh you know that wednesday uh yeah. party uh getting in there and actually watching the, the finalists go head to head against each other uh with just stage lights and i mean it's it's a it's quite the event Right. Well, here's the thing, you know, for years there were, we were talking about like, what kind of a uh, talent can we put on the show? You know, the, what do we, do we get a singer? Do we get a what? It's like, no, we, we just get a DJ and put the world pizza games up there. That is yeah. show enough. That is a yeah. show in itself. You yeah. know, we don't need to hire entertainers or dancers. It's like, that's it. So uh, yeah, it's definitely my favorite part of pizza expo uh, because, you know, we also get to catch up with yeah. people and, uh, and, you know, open bars, all this good too. Yeah. Well, and for those who don't know, you haven't been to Pizza Expo. I mean, it is a show. I mean, these guys are up there. Not Mm -hmm. only are they tossing dough, but they're doing it choreographed to music on a stage in front of all the other people. And oftentimes they're doing two doughs at the same time, flipping it, laying upside down, doing flips, turns. I mean, it is... uh, it's just a note. It was one of those things that my first year at Pete's Expo, I was just blown away by. These, yeah, the these folks, these folks train year round for this, you know, yeah. and most of them are just employees. I'd, I'd say probably all of them are just employees at whatever pizzeria they're at. So they're just yeah. doing this on their breaks or, or in between whatever, in between shifts. So yeah, they, they train all year for this and uh, it's really, really great to go there and support them. Yeah. And uh, our, so our guests are Carmine Testa and his boys, Michael and Nikki. And if you don't know the Jersey City Boys, you probably maybe have seen that they have viral videos of them doing acrobatics and all that kind of thing. So it's going to be very exciting because Michael is now of age to actually compete uh, yeah. in the acrobatics competition. So we'll be excited to see what happens with him. Yeah, I remember seeing him, you know, when he was just a tiny guy, a yeah. real tiny guy up on stage. Yeah doing and his Nikki thing. Nikki too. Nikki was yeah. like a little bit again. The dough was bigger than them at that yeah. point. So it was, yeah. it was, uh, it, it's great to see that he, they, they're grown up and they're going to be in the competition now. That's pretty yeah. cool. But you know, and it's not just about uh, dough acrobatics with these guys. They, so as you know, as the family, they actually helped create the Pizza Across America, which is a national uh, initiative to basically help feed the hungry. Uh, and they're working with Scott Wiener over at Slice Out Hunger to do this uh, in the week of um, National Pizza uh, Day, which is National Pizza Day is February 9th. Uh, and so that week, 
they're dedicating to it. So we talk a little bit about what that is and, and how other people can get involved. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just, I, actually, we can just roll on into it because it's, yeah. uh, he's got all the details there. Absolutely. Let's just roll in. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Every pizza you serve makes an impression. Make each one count with Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese. With a kiss of buffalo milk, velvety melt, extraordinary stretch, no overbrowning, and superb reheat, Baccio is the unparalleled performer designed to consistently impress. And only Baccio offers the Gold Club Rewards Program, which provides monthly cash back and exclusive marketing support. Schedule a demonstration at bacciocheese.com slash hot slice and discover how Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese creates pizzas that impress. Hey, well, we got a, we got the whole crew with us today. Yeah, we do. Look at them all. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, so, so what's so what's been happening? Uh, I mean, we talked to you, I guess, maybe about a year ago, mm-hmm. uh, when things were still kind of locked down. I think so. So, uh, how how are things at the uh, Jersey Pizza Boys right now? Um, Jersey Pizza Boys, we opened up about eight months ago, um, yeah. and that's uh, doing really well. It was very tricky maneuvering the construction um, during, you know, the COVID and the, clo- and then the, the everything was closed. But, you know, what they say it's all about location and luck. Yeah. So when we opened up Jersey Pizza Boys, we, we officially opened up May 12th, which was a Tuesday, mm-hmm. and the governor of New Jersey lifted... Uh, lifted the restrictions on that thursday oh wow so, um, it, was, it couldn't have worked out any better for us um jersey pizza boys has a full liquor license so mm-hmm. people really wanted to get back to, to the bar and drink and watch tv and what i've what i've realized it's um people just like to socialize they really yeah. just like to socialize and you know i see it every day i see one guy on one end of the bar the other guy on the other end of the bar they never met before ever and within 30 minutes, they're close <laughs> to each other and they're having a conversation and they're buying each other a drink. And, and I think that during COVID really, I, you know, that was one of the many things that, you know, people really missed was just the interaction. So mm-hmm. anyway, so, so far, so good. Jersey Pizza Boys is doing well. Yeah. So you, you, have, you say you have a bar. So what kind of size, what, what size are we dealing with here now with the Jersey Pizza Boys? So our location has, it sits about 60 people, 12 fit at the bar, and then around another like 48 with tables. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice size. It's not tiny, but, you know, I think the game's changed in a sense. You know, uh, I would be scared today to have a restaurant that sits two, 300 people. I would oh, yeah. be scared to do it. So, so do I get frustrated sometimes because we fill up some, so quick on Fridays and Saturdays? I do, you know, but at the same time, it's nice seeing the place full and hustling and bustling and, you know, so yeah. that's the way it goes. And it looks like Michael and Nikki have plenty of room to uh, do some dough tossing because I've seen some videos from inside the shop of, you know, being on top of tables, doing some tossing. I've seen some acrobatics on the tables. <laughs> you got to use the space they give us. So. Yeah, I got you. I hear that's you. Awesome. I hear you. <laughs> that's awesome and um and now how is it balancing between the different restaurants i'm lucky enough that my sister my sister is my partner in my jersey city location so mm-hmm. for the last year or so she kind of took lead on running the day-to-day mm-hmm. um i'm more of a i'm more of like hovering i'm more backup if they mm-hmm. have any serious problems she'll get me involved but she's taken over the day to day, which has been a tremendous amount of help for me because um, because of COVID, yeah. you know, Jersey Pizza Boys, we, we opened the door to, to a line. We opened the door mm-hmm. to just a lot of people. What we didn't have in Jersey City were the hands. We didn't have the talent. And I will tell you, and I'm, and I'm really happy to tell you this, all these high school kids that we hired, yeah. I mean, they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of experience, but you know they want to work and they're there yeah. every day and on the weekends. And I'm telling you, I'm building this business with 16 and 17 year old kids in the kitchen, and we're we're in month eight, 
And you can't find pizza guys. You can't find cooks. And, and you know what? The magic is you have to make them. You have yeah. to train them. Yeah. So now I have these 17 year old kids who eight months ago never touched the dough. Now on a Friday night are making 350 pizzas and watching the ovens and cooking. And it's, it's a good feeling. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Well, when you're that age, you can soak up all the knowledge real quick and, 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 you know, you have the tempo to go with it as well. So, I mean, it's a win-win for sure. That's yeah. True. And how were you able to find, cause I always hear, I hear a lot of operators talk about how they can't attract high school kids. Like they can't get them in the door uh, for those flexible hours and things. How were you able to kind of entice them to come in and work for you? Yeah, let's hear it. Well, I got two kids. In high school. I was going to say, they, they did your recruiting for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> All over it. yeah. It's like college football. It's like college football. You got your recruiters out well, there. You, you just mentioned football. So the roughest thing, so Michael played, they both played football. Mm -hmm. Michael played varsity this year. His team did really well. So three quarters of my staff are cheerleaders or football players. Oh, wow. Nice. Friday nights were always tough because – nobody could be on the schedule Friday night. So yeah. Right. The season. And, then and that's pizza night. And that's yeah. pizza night too. So. <laughs> right. And then I couldn't, I couldn't go to the games. Yeah. I couldn't go. So we'd have the live stream on the, the, the dining room, the big TV, you know, all the, all the customers were into it, you know, and, um, and then he would bring back the team after the game would be over, win or lose. And they would come mm -hmm. and they eat pizzas and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. But that's how you get high school kids. You got, you have to have the in, inside hookup. You know? <laughs> I got you. Well, that's yeah. So cool. you, if you know any other pizzeria owners out there, if you don't have any kids, have them now. In about 10 <laughs> years, you can, uh, 10, 15 years, you can, you can get some employees in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of, I'm sure a lot of uh, business owners know this, but really you just have to reach out to the high schools, you know, talk yeah. to the guidance, the guidance department, teachers, there are kids that want to work. They're really, they really are. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, so one thing we wanted to talk about is National Pizza Day coming up February 9th. And you guys are playing a big part in that. And you actually have played a big part in founding uh, the Pizza Across America. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, you know, creating it and what it is? Sure. So the idea of Pizza Across America kind of came to us. Um, you guys know who Scott Wiener is, Slice oh, yeah. Out Hunger. So I think it was in uh, 2017, the winter of 2017, Scott had called us and said, hey, can you bring us like 20 pizzas and meet us? And I can't remember the corner of, of where we're in New York City, but can you meet us on whatever corner in New York City? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you want me to make pizzas and drop them off at a corner in New York City? <laughs> what I didn't know at the time was, they had this bus was going to be there and this bus would go to different locations throughout the city and it would just feed homeless people or people in need of food. So that week was pizza. So Scott reached out to a bunch of his pizza buddies and said, Hey, this is where the bus is going to be. Can you come and bring these pizzas? So of course we said, no problem. So I brought them with me and you know, they're handing out plates and napkins and you know, we really felt good about what we were doing. And on the drive home, you know, they were just telling me about how they felt and, you know, what the experience meant to them. And, uh, and I just thought to, to them out loud, I'm just like, you know, this was such a great idea and it's such a fulfilling, it's such a great feeling. And, and I said, I think we can probably do this on a larger level. It just, the trick would be to kind of orchestrate and coordinate these other pizzerias that could help us. So instead of just being on the corner in New York City, maybe we could do this throughout the country. So I got on the phone with Scott Wiener because he's real familiar with one thing about Scott. You want to talk about the definition of organization? That's Scott. Yeah, right. And, and, um, so I said, hey, I got this idea. I think it's a little bit bigger than me. I don't I see everything we need to do. I just don't know how to connect all the dots. Mm -hmm. And Scott's like, well, you know what? Why don't you come under my umbrella of Slice Out Hunger? And, you know, we'll work it out together. So I, we definitely couldn't have done it without S Scott and his organization. And um, so now we're, we're four years later. And, um, it's, you know, every year it's getting a little bit bigger. So it's a great feeling. Um, and, um, the fact that the world pizza champions now are fully behind it. You have Horn Mellis behind it. 
You have these independent pizzerias across the country are behind it. So it's, it's a local story that you can help, you know, a little mom and pop pizzeria anywhere in the country can help their local community. But mm-hmm. the larger story is that mm-hmm. it's two, 300 of us at the yeah. same time doing it. So it makes an impact. Yeah. Much larger story becomes a mm-hmm. national story. So I call it the power of pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it takes, listen, it's, it's taken a lot of people to help. And, and, and like I said already, and I couldn't do it without Scott and a lot of these other guys helping us. I mean, setting up the charity in an organization is, is quite a bit to do. So it's, it's great that you had Scott there to, to just jump under that and just, and just start rolling. So uh, congrats on that, man. This is a great idea. Thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's really cool. So can you tell me, like, what happens, like, for each pizzeria that signs up and participates, what, uh, what happens in their local community? Like, what, do, what are they doing uh, on February 9th? Okay, so what we're doing is actually, we, um, we changed it so that it's not just February 9th, it's like the week of February week. 9th. So it gives okay. us just a few more days yeah. to, to organize what we need to do. So the actual pizzeria's responsibility is to find the local food bank mm-hmm. or, or charity of their choice. You reach out to a contact there and you introduce yourself and say, hey, listen, we're, we're looking to deliver pizzas to you guys. Would you like it for lunch or dinner? And if so, what time? And about how many people are we looking to feed? So that's like the most important thing. So mm-hmm. you have to coordinate that. And then really the pizzeria will take it upon himself to say, okay, well, <clears throat> they need 12, 15, 20 pizzas, whatever it may be. Yeah. And then they make them and they send them out to that food, you know, that food shelter. The, the day of you make the appointment. And the idea is to have all these pizzerias simultaneously do it so that it's, it, considered like one of the largest deliveries, you know, at, at one time, you know, excuse me. Yeah, I got you. The, the positive is it's a win, 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 because it's great PR for the local pizza business. It's a mm-hmm. way of showing the community that they're, they're giving back to the community. Yeah. It's a way of helping people that need help. And it's not just, you know, I think overall people are, are really giving, but you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter is when people like go out and really like give, but people are hungry year round, you know, so trying to bring awareness that we're, you know, our vehicle is pizza. So we're going to use pizza on National Pizza Day to do what we do. But our thing is, and it's not just the pizzerias we're trying to get through to, we're trying to educate people where like, you know, you can do this any day of any week of any month. It doesn't have the holiday or national pizza day so for example and i use this example a lot we get a lot of orders on a regular tuesday and it's three pizzas it's two orders of mozzarella sticks and you know three cannolis for example well maybe one day you may not want the two mozzarella sticks and the three cannolis you may want to order just an, an additional cheese pizza and send out two deliveries one to your house for your family to eat mm-hmm. and then that other pizza can go to a church or a local food bank. So we want to educate people, not just the business owners, but people too can make a difference every day. So they don't just have to do this on February 9th. Yeah. They can choose any, any day of the year to do this also. Well, that's perfect. That sounds awesome. Now I understand like with, um, with the organized uh, pizza across America that the registration deadline is actually going to be for pizzerias. It's actually going to be a couple days before this podcast comes out but i understand that that they can still participate after the 14th it's just there's some just logistical differences is that right yeah so i I think the deadline right now is for the pizzerias who need (laughs) help finding that local food bank Ah, there's a handful of pizzerias that say hey we want to do this but we don't know how to do it so if that's if that's your situation we needed you to, to, to sign i think it was by you know by yesterday the, um, yeah. the 11th, right? Yeah. Um, and, and we can help you. We can help you do that. But any pizzeria that that is self sufficient in the sense that they know what food bank or charity that they want to use, they could sign up even after that date. Okay. Yeah. And I understand that Scott has like a million resources. Like he's got a toolkit with all kinds of fun things for people to um, to be able to help promote their their giving opportunity. Right. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Uh, Scott reached out to me uh, a couple of days ago, said we didn't have one in Kentucky. And so I gave him a, a good long <laughs> list of pizzerias in Kentucky. So if you're watching this and you're in Kentucky, don't let me down. <laughs> Get in a pizza across America. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kentucky on board. That's awesome. Well, you know, as we talk about like giving and things, what are some other opportunities that you guys participate in uh, with with your pizzerias? What are you, um, you know, how are you locally, you know, giving back to your community? Well, the big thing right now is we do a lot of stuff through our schools. So Woodbridge mm -hmm. Township, where Jersey Pizza Boys is located in Woodbridge Township, we have three major high schools. Yeah. So a lot of these high schools have sports organizations. So the big thing is, you do the 10% or 15% off if they come with a, a certain ID that states they're representing the girls softball team, for example. Yeah. So they'll order a pizza and then 15% of that revenue will go to their organization. So that we help a lot with. Um, really like the Knights of Columbus, we basically don't say no to anybody mm -hmm. who's looking for any kind of help if it's within the boundary that we can help them you know anything that's food related you know we'll, we'll we'll never say no to you know so really the the knights of columbus we do some stuff for like the seniors um but predominantly the schools are the ones that they're just really busy doing all these different events and stuff like that so you know not just us a lot of local businesses are, are really part of that community that help raise money for a lot of the, a lot of the school kids which brings in the school kids, which possibly employees. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> <I'll try back laughs> it just goes around. It goes around. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we can't have you guys with, on the podcast without talking about pizza dough acrobatics. So tell me, guys, Michael, Nikki, what, what have you been working on? You got any new tricks up your hat? Uh, you got any <laughs> new, new things that, that you're busting out lately? I mean, everything is exclusive right now. You're going to have to see it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's behind a paywall it's behind a paywall we got a, yeah. uh, so. so listen i'm i'm super excited about this because the first time we um you know we came to vegas was in 2013 michael was eight and wow. um we were we were about a year into our first viral video so you know michael was on stage and the and the pizza community got to see him live in vegas and then the following year which was 2014 nikki jumped on stage with michael yeah i remember that yeah I remember this, that. Year, this cool. year is going to be different this year michael is actually going to compete yes uh, yay that's gonna be fun so um about I'm, time <laughs> I'm about that he's nikki still got to you know go a few years before he'll yeah. be eligible to, to compete but um so i'm really i'm really excited uh for michael this year to you know now it's no I, more games you know now it's yeah, not like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boy, and, ooh, now it's, it's game like, time exactly Judges i can see it i can i can see it happening now michael winning the next three championships and nikki's <laughs> gonna come up and it's gonna be a heck of a story every year from then on it's gonna be a domination <laughs> right I'll tell you what, there's there's a few people out there that i got my eye on that um they're they're real talented yeah, yeah. there's a lot of talented yeah. people out there we're doing that yeah. right now yeah. for sure it's really? come a long way since 2013 i know that yeah for you sure know? For sure. And hey, Michael, what what's gone into your preparation? What, how, you know, how much are you preparing for Expo? I mean, we, we're still, you know, a couple months away. So you got yeah. plenty of time to, to, do you have your routine fully together and you're, you're kind of perfecting it? Or are you still working on the details of what you want to do with it? Well, you can always perfect what you're doing. But yeah. right now it's freestyle and see what moves like correlate to each other, go into each other at a nice rhythm and just build it up for right now. So right now I'm freestyling, figuring yeah. out what I'm going to do. How do you, pick, how do you right. pick the music that you want? How do you pick the music? What are you going for? Ah. <laughs> you know, like, I, just, I just follow the beat. You know what's so funny <laughs> is that when they were little, I was able to, I was the decision maker. Mm -hmm. They were the talent, but I was the decision maker. Uh -huh. And it worked. It really worked selfishly the problem i'm having right now is that they have opinions <laughs> they were little they had no opinions they just did what daddy said so i i have to ease up the rain a little bit and uh yeah, you know sure. give them some wings but one of the things i'm pretty good at is um is the music end of it and as you know like even in the judging i've been i've been a judge in vegas for the last couple of years right, right. Mm -hmm. and i'll tell you i've seen some really talented talented people and they just pick the wrong music. I've, I've seen it myself. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. too slow. And they, or... and they don't get it. They don't yeah. get it. Like, 
the music is so important. And, and the best way I can explain it is you have to put a song on that if, it, if there's nobody even, forget about freestyle pizza tossing, just, just the song itself has to make you already happy. Yeah. Yeah. Now you yeah. add whatever it is you're adding to it, it makes it that much better, you know? Mm -hmm. So music is something I'm going to stay firm on. And I'm like, all right, you guys will have some <laughs> setting what's going on, but daddy's picking the music. That's great. <laughs> like but yeah, because you got to get that crowd into it, you know, from the very first few beats. Exactly. You know, if it's slow and you're coming out slow, you, it's, it's hard to regain. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. There's, there's, there's been a few people where they're, I don't know the right category the music would be on there, but it's almost like mosh pit kind of music. <laughs> and they're super talented. Like, they're so great, but they mm -hmm. come out with this music, and you're just like, oh, that was a great move, but I can't stand this music. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it, right, it, right. Affects, it affects the score. It does. Yeah. You yeah. know? Well, you got to have some beats, some rhythm, you know, because yeah. I mean, you're in a freestyle acrobat contest competition yeah. so <laughs> and we got we got he's got a few tricks up his sleeve so all right well we're looking and, forward to it <laughs> and luckily y'all have been on that stage before so you understand mm -hmm. like how many people that you're performing in front of and so that probably takes a little bit of a uh you know the the pressure away when you already know what to expect right yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we'll be super excited to see sure. what, what you do, Michael. And uh, we can't wait to see what happens with Pizza Across America. And hopefully, maybe by, you know, coming on here and talking to pizza operators, maybe we can get a few more signed up from uh, the podcast as well. So if you're interested, uh, where, can, where can they go to, uh, to find out about Pizza Across America? SliceOutHunger.com. Or okay. dot org, I believe. I'm going to say the wrong one. I think it's dot org. Let me look it up. I think it's, oh, dot, I think it's, it's dot, dot org. org. Yes, dot yeah, org. Right? Yeah, and, uh, and, and Scott has that broken down, explains it perfectly, and then mm -hmm. you know, links to, to join and everything. Scott has done, and his staff have done an amazing job on making this so easy to, to be a part of. Yeah. Awesome. I can see that's something that's going to grow every year. You know, yeah, I, I just I can't see I, how I it's, so. it's going to really, grow every year. It's, it's just, it's a win, win, win situation. It really, really is. And, Absolutely. Um, it, you know, how do you not want to help? There's not, there's not one person I ever asked that owned a pizzeria to do this yeah. that said no. There's, there's no yeah. reason why you wouldn't want to do this. Yeah, as exactly. far as the food industry goes, nobody gives more than the pizzerias, really. They no. don't. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody can stand up to the pizzeria's own one giving back <laughs> at all. <laughs> so, yeah. all right, guys, any more final thoughts before we let you go off this podcast? I know you've got busy days ahead of you. It's a man of few words. There you go. <laughs> I'm all good. Well, yeah. got, we're, we're so looking forward to Expo. We're looking forward to seeing everybody. I'm looking forward to that Vegas sun hitting my mm. face. That's what <laughs> yes, yeah. brother. So I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys. Uh, not meeting you, to, to seeing you guys. Yep. So, um, you know, can't wait. Absolutely. Right, well, thanks so much for coming on the show, guys. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in Vegas. See you in 10 weeks or so. All right. See ya. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.